Alright, so let's start with a quick overview of what all is going to come inside of your crochet bundle kit. So first you get this really cute box with a cute print. So let's get this opened up and go through all of the things that are inside. Alright, so first up you'll have your QR code access, which if you're here you've probably already figured out because this is the video course. Then we have our super soft yarn that we're going to be using to make our bunny. Next we have our notions. So inside of here you'll have your hook, your tapestry needles, your stitch markers, all of that good stuff. Here you'll find your safety eyes and the thread we're going to use to sew our bunny's mouth. Here is the pair of glasses that we'll use to accessorize our bunny. Here's the written pattern that we're going to be using. We'll be following this pattern inside of this tutorial course. Our bunny's accessory kit. So you can see we have this really cute shirt that has a little bunny on it. A visor for our bunny so he can still have his ears come through his hat. And a really cute little crossbody bag for our bunny to wear. And then here we have our fiber fill stuffing that we're going to use to stuff our bunny. So that's everything that comes inside of your kit. Let's go ahead and get started with the video tutorial. Alright, so let's get started with our pattern. We're going to begin by opening up that Notions pack and we're going to grab our crochet hook and then we also need a stitch marker. Now you've got a lot of options to choose from for stitch markers, but I would recommend using one of the ones that lock. That way when we put it in we don't have to worry about it slipping out. But since you've got some choices, find one that you like and then use that one throughout the project. Then we're also going to want to grab our skein of yarn and get the yarn started. And once we have all of that, we are ready to get started on the head. So we'll begin by forming a magic ring. And to do that, we need to sort of make a finger guns here with our left hand. So we'll take a little bit of a tail from our yarn here, and we're going to pinch it against the lower digit on our index and middle finger with our thumb. Then we can flip our hand over and with the yarn still attached to our ball, so not the tail but the working yarn, we're going to wrap around the top digit of our two fingers. Keep your fingers together too when you do this. Then we'll flip over and we're going to cross over on top of the yarn that we've got pinched and then pinch it with our thumb too. We'll flip back over, wrap around that lower digit on those two fingers then flip over and we're going to pull that yarn behind our thumb to hold all of it in place onto our hand. Then we can take our crochet hook and we're going to slip it underneath that top loop and with the hook part of it we'll grab it and pull it underneath the top loop. Then we're going to take both our left and our right hands and together flip them over and then bring them so that your hands are close together and your hook is up alongside the back of your left hand. Then with our right index finger and thumb, we're going to grab both the loop on our hook and the one that we still have pinched on our fingers. So we'll take those fingers on our right hand and just pinch that closely. Once we've got all that pinched and we're holding on pretty tightly, we can let go with our thumb and gently slide our fingers out. Once you've had your fingers slid out, we need to grab our working yarn. That's the stuff still attached to our skein, remember. And we're going to tension it by putting it over our left index finger. And we can grab the remainder of that yarn with our left hand, all the other fingers besides our thumb. And then we're also going to want to hold on to that twist. You can see here there's a little twist of yarn. We're going to want to hold on to that with our left hand as well. So I'm going to pinch here and there. 
Once I've done that, I can let go with my right hand. You see, when I let go with my right hand, there's a loop still on my hook, but it's a little loose. So to tighten this loose loop up a little bit, we can pull. You see, you can see I can pull with my left index finger that working yarn, which tightens that loop on my hook. Now we don't want it too tight. We want to be able to move it around on our hook still. But once we've done that, we can take our hook and we're going to do what's called a yarn over. We're going to put the yarn over our hook and then using our hook itself, we'll pull the working yarn through the loop on our hook. Once you've done that, you can actually let go of everything. Nothing's going to come undone that locks our magic loop in place. We also need to do a little untangling before we place our first stitch. So the tail, that's the part not attached, remember this is a working yarn, we need to pull the tail out from the inside of that loop. So just pull. And then once you've done that, we're ready to make our first single crochet stitch. Because if you look, round one calls for six single crochet to be placed in our magic loop. So before we start placing, we also need to work over the tail that we have. So when we're working, we're going to be holding the magic loop and the tail and working under and around them. Alright, so we are ready to make our first single crochet stitch. So to do that, we're going to take our hook and we're going to go under these two strands here, the ring, the loop of our magic loop, and the tail. We'll go from front to back underneath both of those. And then we'll take our hook and grab our working yarn and we're going to pull it through the magic ring and under the tail. We also don't want this to be too tight. If you have it really tightly, the stitches won't turn out. You have to kind of pull up a little bit. Then to finish our single crochet, we're going to take our hook and yarn over one more time and then pull through both of the loops left on our hook. Our first single crochet in Amiga Rumi also gets marked. So we're going to grab that stitch marker that we've made, that we've picked out. And we need to mark that stitch by going through both sides. So if you look at my stitch, you can sort of see there's a little bit of a V. We've got this side of the stitch and that side of the stitch. We're going to take the stitch marker and from front to back, push it underneath both sides of that V and then click it into place. Now we're marking that stitch because we need to remember which one is our first stitch for round two. I also like to make this stitch just a little tighter than the rest of mine, and I'll do that by taking my index and thumb on my right hand and sort of just scooting the stitch over. So I kind of pull the tail in the magic loop and then scoot the stitch. Alright, so we've got our first single crochet. We've got it marked. Next, we need to finish adding single crochets to this magic loop. So we need six total. We have five, or we have one, so we need five more. So let's do the next one together nice and slow to practice. So we'll take our hook from front to back, go under both the magic loop and the tail, yarn over, pull through and up, and yarn over and pull through both loops. And we're going to keep adding single crochet stitches to this magic loop until we have six total. Alright, so now that we have six single crochet stitches, let's double check. And this is a good way for us to practice counting our stitches too. Our first stitch is marked. We went ahead and took care of that, so we know this is our first stitch. We count the V's, we can see how many we have already made. So one, here's my second V, two, three, four, five, and six. We don't ever count this loop on our hook as a stitch, it's sort of like a stitch in progress. 
Alright, so once you have all six of those single crochet stitches complete, we can do the magic part of our magic loop. We'll take this tail and we're going to very gently tug until our circle closes up on itself. Alright, so that is our first round complete. Let's move on to round two. So for round two, we're going to learn how to start the first round of working in stitches, and we also are going to learn how to do an increase. So with Amiga Rumi, we mark this first stitch because it tells us where round one ends and round two begins. So our first increase is going to be worked in this stitch here. I sometimes lose track of where this stitch is, so I like to put my hook through it before I take my marker out. That's usually a pretty decent idea. So I'm going to slip my hook through and then take my marker out. And then our first stitch needs to be an increase. And an increase is when you place two single crochet stitches in the same place. So we're going to go ahead and make our first single crochet stitch. Then we'll take our stitch marker and mark that. And then to make our increase, we need to make another single crochet in that same space. So if you look, you can see there's a little bit of a hole. That's the stitch that I've already worked in. And then there's this V here, which is the stitch that I just made. We need to go and put another single crochet in that same place. So I'm going to take my hook and push it from front to back just like before through that same stitch. Yarn over and draw up a loop. And yarn over and draw through both. And these two single crochet stitches in the same stitch from the last round are an increase. So we need to continue increasing around. So let's do the next one together as well. You see here's our next V. So we're going to go from front to back underneath. Yarn over, draw up a loop. Yarn over and draw through both. And then do that same thing in the hole that we just went through. And then we're going to continue increasing for the rest of this round. Alright, so I finished my last increase, and then I'm going to double check that I have the correct amount of stitches in this row by counting. So I'm going to pull this, my hook, I'm going to pull that last loop up a little bit so I can take my hook out. And then let's look and see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And if you look at our instructions up here in the top left, you can see that we are supposed to have 12 stitches total. So that means I've done this round correctly. So I'll go ahead and put my hook back in. And I'm going to tighten down. If you find that you don't have enough stitches, you can also sort of troubleshoot a lot of the time. You can look and see, okay, I can see there are two V's coming out of the same hole here. But maybe further along you might notice, oh, I only have one coming out of this stitch. I need to go back and add an extra one. To do that, it's really easy. You just take your hook out and pull your working yarn until your stitches come out and you're at the spot where you maybe made your mistake. And then it's as simple as just continuing along. There, I fixed my mistake. It's like it never happened. All right, next up, we'll work on round three. All right, so before we even start round three, the tail from our magic loop sometimes is kind of annoying. So I like to take my scissors, and I don't cut it all the way off, but I do cut it short. So maybe there's like two inches or so hanging over the back of my work. All right, so we're ready for round three, and if you look in the top left here, it's telling us we need to do one single crochet and then increase, and that's inside of some asterisks. So what that's telling us is that we're going to be spacing our increases out. 
So we'll start with the first part of that sequence, which is to make one single crochet. I'm going to go through that same place that my stitch marker is in. I'll go ahead and make that one single crochet. Then I'm going to mark that, since it is now the first stitch of my round. And then in the next stitch, I need to make an increase. So I'm going to put two single crochet stitches in the same place. And then everything that's inside of that asterisk, we're going to repeat in order, so the sequence, until we get all the way around and we're on the other side of our stitch marker. So I'll start that sequence over. I'm going to make one single crochet and then I'll put an increase in the next stitch. And I'm going to keep repeating that until I get to the end of my round. So there's my last increase. So let's say perhaps you didn't end on an increase. Maybe you ended with just one single crochet. That means that somewhere in this round, there's a chance that we may have misplaced a stitch. So just like I showed last round, if you end up with the wrong amount of stitches or you end on the wrong part of your sequence, you can always pull your work out and fix your mistake. All right, let's move on to the next round. All right, so for round four, we're going to start off by placing a single crochet stitch in the first stitch of our round. And then, of course, we're going to mark that because it's our new first stitch. And then we're going to place an increase in the next stitch. And then we have some asterisks again that are telling us that we need to put two single crochet and then an increase in that sequence. So when it says two single crochet it doesn't mean two in the same spot because that's when an increase is. It means to put one single crochet in the next two stitches. So we'll do one single crochet stitch here, another one in the next stitch, and then we're going to follow that with an increase. And then we're going to repeat that sequence all the way around until we get to our last stitch. And we'll put just one single crochet in that last stitch. Alright, I'm on my last stitch, which is just to place one single crochet. And I'm ready to move on to my next round. Alright, so for round five, we're going to continue increasing. So we'll place one single crochet stitch in the next three stitches. So there's my first, there's my second, my third, and I'm going to increase in the next stitch. I'll continue repeating that sequence all the way around. Alright, here's my last increase. And that wraps the end of round five. Okay, so for round six, we're going to begin by placing one single crochet stitch in the next two stitches. So there's my first. following that with an increase. And then we'll start our next sequence of repeats, which is going to be to place one single crochet stitch in the next four stitches. And follow that with an increase. And then we'll repeat that same sequence until we get to our last two stitches where we'll place just one single crochet in each. Alright, I'm on my last two stitches, so I'm going to go ahead and put one single crochet in each. And then before we move on to round seven, you may have noticed your work starting to kind of cup a little bit. That's totally normal and actually kind of what we want. But we need to make sure it's cupping the right direction. 
So if you look, you can see the side that we're looking at, that we're facing right now, is called the right side. And it's the side that has our stitches. They look kind of neat and tidy. They have a little bit of an X to them. The wrong side, or the back of our work, is the side that our magic loop tail is on. And it also has more, it has like these lines that run along it. It looks a little less tidy. This is the side that we want to be on the inside of that cup shape. That's the side that's going to be inside of our bunny's head. So we won't even be able to see these stitches. So as you work, just kind of encourage your piece to sort of roll with the right side on the outside of the curve and the wrong side on the inside of your cup. And as we keep working, eventually you won't have to roll it. It'll kind of just hold that shape on its own. All right, let's move on. All right, so for round seven, we're gonna start by placing one single crochet stitch in each of the next five stitches. So there's my first, and of course I'm marking it because it is the first stitch of the round. I'll follow that with an increase. And then just like before, we're gonna repeat that same sequence all the way around. All right, here's my last increase. And that wraps up round seven. For round eight, we'll start off by placing one single crochet in the next three stitches. Following that with an increase. And then we're gonna start our new sequence of single crocheting in the next six stitches, followed by an increase which we're going to repeat all the way around until we get to our last three stitches. All right, I'm at my last three single crochet stitches. And that wraps up round eight. All right, round nine is our last increase round for the head. So we'll start off by placing one single crochet in the next seven stitches, and then we will increase. And just like before, we're gonna repeat that sequence all the way around. All right, here is my last increase for round nine. And then if you look for rounds 10 through 17, we just need to put one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So we're just gonna keep working around and around until we've worked eight rounds total of just single crochet. So remember as you work these rounds to try to keep the right side of your work out. So the first couple you'll have to kind of gently encourage so we don't want the wrong side facing out with the magic loop tail. But after a while, it'll sort of kind of cup on its own. So I am just now starting round 10. I will catch you back here when I get closer to the end of round 17. So I will see you then. All right, I am wrapping up the end of round 17. And I'm ready to start in on round 18, where we're going to learn how to do a decrease. But we're going to start just how we would when we were increasing. We're going to begin by placing one single crochet stitch in the next seven stitches. And then we're going to decrease by actually single crocheting two stitches together. So we'll be working in the next two stitches. And to do a decrease, we're going to go through our next stitch just like we would if you we were single crocheting from front to back, yarn over and pull through. But then rather than finishing by yarning over and pulling through these two loops, we're going to repeat that same process 
going to the next stitch, pushing our hook through, yarning over and drawing up a loop. And then to complete our decrease, we'll take our yarn, yarn over, and pull through all three loops on our hook. So that's a decrease. We're going to continue that same sequence all the way around. And that wraps up this round. For round 19, we're going to start off by putting one single crochet stitch in the next three stitches. Then we will decrease in the next two stitches. That's just one decrease. Then we're going to start our sequence of single crocheting in the next six stitches. followed by a decrease, which we'll repeat all the way around until we get to our last three stitches. All right, here are my last three stitches of the round, which I'm gonna just put one single crochet in each. All right, let's move on to round 20. For round 20, we're going to continue decreasing by placing one single crochet stitch in the next five stitches. So here's my first. And then we'll follow that with a decrease. Then we're going to repeat that sequence all the way around. Here's my last decrease, and that wraps up this round. Round 21, we're going to put one single crochet stitch in the next two stitches. So here's our first. And then we'll follow that with a decrease. And then we'll start our pattern decrease of one single crochet stitch in the next four stitches followed by a decrease, which we're going to repeat all the way around into our last two stitches. All right, here are my last two stitches of the round, which I'm going to put one single crochet in. And we're ready to move on to round 22. Round 22, we're going to continue decreasing by placing one single crochet stitch in the next three stitches. So here's my first one, follow that with a decrease. Then just like before, we're going to repeat that sequence all the way around. All right, here's my last decrease, and I'm ready to move on in my pattern. Alright, so before we move on to round 23, we need to add our safety eyes. So I'm going to pull my last stitch really long by just pulling my hook. I'm going to set my hook aside so we can add our eyes. So I like to add my eyes on the other side of the head from where my active stitch is. So I'm just going to flip the head over. And then I'm going to grab one of my safety eyes out of my little um, safety eyes and my mouth notions bag. And our pattern's telling us it needs to go between rounds 14 and 15. So I'm going to use my eye, the stem of it, to help me count, starting from the top of our piece. So this is round 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So the space between rounds 14 and 15 are where our eyes are going to go. And then I also went ahead and grabbed my bunny's glasses because I wanted to double check whenever I place my second eye that my eyes are where I want them inside of the glasses. 
So our pattern says nine stitches apart. So let's start there. So we're going to count just the gaps, like the holes that we would push our hook through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stitches. Now let's take a look and see here. This has it so the eyes are a little further out on the outsides of the glasses. So I'm going to move the eye that I just placed in by two stitches. So it'll actually be seven stitches apart. And of course, feel free to play around with this yourself, where you'd like the eyes to be placed based on where the glasses are. Those are pretty much dead center on the center of the glasses, so I'm actually going to keep my eyes here. All right, so now that I have my eyes placed through the fabric, I'm also going to grab the little plastic backs that came inside of the bag with the eyes, and these snap onto the back side of the eyes inside of our piece. So we can just flip our work inside out and take that plastic part, and when we push, it'll snap into place onto the back of our fabric. All right, I am also going to stuff my head here as well, so it's time to open up that really super soft fluff and get some stuffing inside of our bunny's head. All right, so the head is stuffed and the safety eyes have been added, so we can move on to round 23 in our pattern. All right, so we're ready to start in on round 23. So we're gonna take our hook and put it back inside of that loop that we drew up really long. And then we'll just pull our working yarn to tighten our loop. So for round 23, we're gonna start off by putting one single crochet in the next stitch. Don't forget you wanna mark that stitch as well since this is the first one of our round. We'll follow that with a decrease. And then we'll start our sequence of two single crochet stitches in the next two. So one in each of the next two stitches, followed by a decrease. Until we get to the last stitch of our round. Alright, here's my last stitch of the round. I'm going to put one single crochet in, and I'm ready to go on the last round of the head. Alright, so for the last round, round 24, we're going to start by putting one single crochet stitch in the next stitch. Don't forget, we'll want to mark that stitch as well. And then we'll decrease, and we'll repeat that all the way around. All right, I am on my last decrease. And I am ready to fasten off. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my stitch marker out. Then I'm going to slip stitch to that stitch that my marker was just in. So to do that, I'm going to take my hook and from front to back push it through. And then just like with a single crochet, I'm going to pull my yarn through, but rather than yarning over and going through both loops, I'm just going to keep pulling that yarn until I've pulled it through the last loop left on my hook. Then we need a long tail for sewing because we're going to use this to sew the bunny's head onto the body. So go ahead and get yourself maybe a 14 inch tail and we're going to cut. And then we'll take our hook and we're going to just pull that loop and keep pulling, pulling, pulling until we've pulled our yarn all the way through. And then to tighten our slip knot into a knot, we can just pull to tighten it up. And then I'm also going to add just a little more stuffing inside the bunny's head here. Alright, so that is the bunny's head complete. Let's move on to the body. Alright, so before we move on to the body, you may notice that I will be using a different color yarn. That 
is totally normal. It's because this is one of a series of four kits that are designed around a very similar shape and will combine all of the pieces that you've made together for assembly to make our finished animal. All right, so let's move on with the body. All right, so let's start the body and we'll be tying a magic loop. So remember we'll cross our yarn over, take our hook, grab that top loop, slip the bottom loop underneath. We're gonna pinch all of that together. Tension our yarn and pull through. And we'll untangle and you're ready to get started. And we'll begin by placing six single crochet stitches inside of our magic ring. So here's my first, and don't forget, we always mark our first stitch, even if it's in a magic ring. So I'm gonna slip one of my stitch markers through. And let's make five more. And then we'll pull the tail to close up that round. And we're ready to move on to round two. Round two, we'll increase in each stitch. So remember, when we increase, we put two single crochet stitches in the same place. So here's my first, and I will, of course, mark it. And then in that same space, I'll place my second. And I will do that all the way around. All right, that wraps up round two. Round three, we're gonna continue increasing by placing one single crochet stitch in our first stitch of the round, marking that stitch. And then one increase in the next stitch. And then we're gonna repeat that sequence all the way around. All right, that wraps up that round. Okay, so for round four, we're gonna continue increasing. This time we'll put one single crochet stitch in the next two stitches. So here's my first. And then we'll increase in the stitch after. And we're gonna repeat that sequence all the way around. All right, that's the end of that round for me. Round five, we're gonna continue increasing. This time we'll place one single crochet stitch in the next three stitches. So here's the first. And after those first three stitches, we'll increase in the next. And just like before, we're gonna repeat that same sequence all the way around. All right, that wraps up round five. Let's move on to round six. So we're gonna start by placing one single crochet stitch in each of the next four stitches. and then we'll increase in the next. And just like before, we'll repeat that sequence all the way around. All right, that's row six done. For round seven, we're going to continue increasing by placing one single crochet stitch in the next five stitches. And once we have those first five, we'll place an increase in the next. And just like all the rounds before, we're gonna repeat that same sequence all the way around. All right, that's round seven done. All right, so for rounds eight through round 15, all we need to do is put one single crochet in each stitch. So I will see you whenever I get close to the end of round 15. All right, I am wrapping up round 15 and I'm ready to move on to round 16. 
So for round 16, we're going to start decreasing. And we'll do that by placing one single crochet stitch in each of the next five stitches. So here's my first, so I'm going to mark it. I have those first five stitches we're going to place a decrease so just a quick review on a decrease we'll go through yarn over and pull up a loop and then go through our next stitch yarn over pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through all the loops on our hook then we're going to repeat that sequence all the way around And that wraps up this round. All right, so before we keep working, we need to divide the body in half because we're going to continue working one leg and then we'll attach to the other side and work the other. So I'm gonna take this loop on my hook, I'm gonna pull it up long, and then I'm gonna count out 18 stitches here. So we'll start with the one on our, the one that our marker's in, so that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. Then I'm going to take these two stitches, the one with the marker and the one that I have pinched in my fingers here, and I'm going to open my marker up and slip it underneath that 18th stitch that I've counted. And I'm going to close that because that splits my body in half. So we're going to continue. We didn't even have to take our yarn off. We're going to continue working around on this side to form one of the legs. And then when we finish this leg off, we'll come back and reattach and then work around this side to make the other leg. Great, so now that we have those divided, we can make our round 17 through 19. And to do that, we're going to single crochet around just one in each stitch. So we're gonna go really carefully here on this first stitch because it's a little strange having to kind of swing around. But all we need to do to start working this round is we're gonna kind of rotate our piece. And then we want to make sure we're going through, we want to go from the front to the back. We don't want to come in from the inside to the out. But we're going to go through the stitch on the other side of our marker. So here's our 18th stitch that we've got pinched. We're going to go from front to back through that 19th stitch. And that single crochet that we've just made is the first single crochet on this leg. So we'll take a new stitch marker and we're going to mark that first single crochet. And then we're going to just place one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. And we'll do that for rounds 17, 18, and 19. All right, I am wrapping up round 19. And you can see our leg is already starting to form on the side of the body. So let's go ahead and move on to round 20. And round 20, we will begin by placing one single crochet stitch in the next four stitches. Then we're going to decrease the next two stitches. And we'll repeat that sequence all the way around. Alright, that is round 20 done. For rounds 21 and 22, we just need to place one single crochet stitch all the way around. So I will see you at the end of round 22. Alright, I am approaching the end of round 22. Here's my last stitch. 
And then before we move on, our pattern's telling us that we need to stuff the upper half and then a little bit of the leg that we're working on. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this loop that's on our hook long so our work doesn't come undone. And we'll grab some more of that super soft stuffing and we're gonna go ahead and put some inside of the upper half of the body. All right, and then we're also gonna add some inside of the leg here. All right, I have added my stuffing. So I can continue working on this leg. All right, so we're ready to work round 23. So we're gonna take our hook and we'll reinsert it into that loop we drew up long and then pull our working yarn. And for round 23, we're going to continue decreasing by placing one single crochet stitch in the next three stitches. So here's our first. And then we'll follow that with a decrease. And repeat that all the way around. Okay, we're ready to, to make round 24. So all we need to do for round 24 is put one single crochet stitch all the way around. Here's the last stitch of round 24. And we need to add a little more stuffing to the inside of this leg. So again, we'll pull up that loop a little long, grab just a little more fluff. And then we are ready to work round 25. So we'll reinsert our hook. Go ahead and take our stitch marker out. And for round 25, we're gonna put a decrease in every stitch all the way around. So we're gonna decrease. Don't forget to put our stitch marker back in to mark our first stitch. And we'll keep decreasing. And then we are ready to fasten off on our leg. So to do that, we'll go ahead and take our stitch marker out. Then we're gonna slip stitch to the next stitch, the one that our stitch marker was in. So again, to slip stitch, we'll go through our next stitch, yarn over and pull through both the work and through the loop on our hook. And then we need to cut a little bit of a tail because we need to close up the bottom of this foot. So cut yourself about six inches or so. Then we'll pull through, so we'll take our hook and pull our yarn, and then tighten that. And then I'm gonna put just a little more stuffing in the very tip of the foot here. And then I am ready to close up the foot, so to do that, I'm gonna take the yarn tail that I've cut and then using one of the tapestry needles from my kit, I'll thread that yarn through the eye. And then I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna sew through each of the six stitches that are left on the bottom of my foot. So I'll just take my, yarn, my tapestry needle. I'm gonna go from front to back just like I would if I were crocheting underneath and I'll do the same thing on the stitch next to it. And I'll just keep working around. So here's my last stitch. And then I'm gonna very gently tug to close the bottom of the foot. Then when I've done that, we need to tie a knot and weave this tail in. So the way I like to tie my knots is I will loop my working yarn, what's threaded through my tapestry needle, over the surface of my work. And then I'll take my needle and slip it underneath and then up through that loop. And then when I pull, it ties a knot. So now that I have a knot tied, I'm gonna take my tail and I'm gonna weave it in to my piece. I'm gonna keep weaving by sewing long stitches on the inside of my work. 
I'm going to do one more. Then when I have that woven in, I can take my scissors and by pulling that working yarn and cutting, it hides the tail inside of the body. Alright, so let's move on by getting the next leg attached and working around. Alright, so let me get you started on how to make the other leg. We're going to follow the same pattern starting from round 17 all the way around to form our second leg, but it's a little tricky trying to figure out how to attach the yarn sometimes, especially if you're new to Amigurumi. So let me walk you through how to get that done. So we're going to take our hook and we're going to go through the stitch. So I'm looking at my piece. Here's my marker here. I'm going to go through the same stitch that my marker is in on this side. Then I'm going to take my yarn and I'm going to oops, make a little loop here with it. Then I'll hook that on my hook and pull that loop through. And then I'm actually going to keep pulling until the tail of that loop comes through. And then we're going to tie this on so that it's attached to our work. So we'll just tie a regular knot, like a square knot, as if you were tying your shoe. Once that's tied, we can take this tail and kind of stuff it inside of the body because we were not going to need it anymore. Then we're going to take our hook and reinsert it in the same loop that we just tied to. And then we will draw a loop up. Alright, so now that we have our yarn tied on, we're going to go ahead and go through that same stitch that we just went through that we tied our yarn on. And then we're going to yarn over and draw the yarn through that loop. Then we're going to continue single crocheting around as normal, just like we would for round 17. So we'll go through our next stitch, yarn over, draw up the loop. So I worked all the way around and I am at the stitch marker here on the other side. So I'm going to go through that stitch that it's marking and create a single crochet. And then we're actually going to need to place a single crochet stitch inside of the stitch across the way that we fastened on to be our 18th stitch. So we kind of need to like stretch our hook over a little bit and then just like with the other leg we'll flip it around and go from front to back. So I'm going to go through and make that last single crochet stitch. It can be a little tricky to get with the other leg. If the other leg's in your way you can kind of hold your hand behind. I'm going to take that stitch marker out now that we're all the way around. And we are good to continue working this leg like this leg on this side. Alright, so I have finished my second leg and I'm getting ready to fasten off, but before I do, um, I wanted to point out that there is a little bit of a gap between both of the legs, which is totally normal. So when we cut the tail for this leg, we're going to use it to kind of help sew this gap closed. So we'll go ahead and fasten off. I went ahead and slip stitched already. We're going to cut a little bit of a longer tail, so maybe 8 inches this time rather than 6. And then we'll take the crochet hook and pull to have our slip knot and then tighten that. So before we sew that gap closed, we do need to close off the bottom of the foot just like we did before. All 
Alright, so now that I have fastened off and I've tied my knot, we're going to weave our tail in and up to this part here on our body. So go ahead and just push your tapestry needle into the leg, and we can slowly weave the tail up through the inside of the body and over to the gap between. Then before we start sewing, we're going to want to tie another knot because if we pull this, we'll pull the tip of our foot in, which we don't want to do. So we'll do the same thing we did whenever we fastened off when we tied a knot. We'll tie another knot down here by looping our thread over, bringing our yarn up through that loop that we've made. And that'll prevent us from pulling the fabric of the tip of the foot down while we sew. Then to sew the gap between the legs closed, we're just going to run some long straight stitches between. So I'm going to go over and sew. And then when I pull that stitch, it'll bring the fabric together. Do the same thing on the next stitch. Sew through. And then give that a tug which closes the gap between the legs. Then we can fasten off for real this time by tying one more knot. And then weaving that tail end in. Then we can go ahead and take that extra tail and cut. And that is the body complete. All right, so next up, we're going to make the bunnies here. So we need to make two of these. So let's start with one. And we'll begin by putting six single crochet stitches inside of a magic loop. All right, now that I have all six, I'm gonna pull that tail and I am ready to move on to round two. Alright, so for round two, we're going to put an increase in each stitch. Alright, that wraps up round two. I'm also going to give my magic ring tail a really tight tug to make sure that this first round is nice and secure. Alright, we're going to move on to round three. For round three, we're going to start increasing by placing one single crochet stitch in the first stitch of the round and then follow that with an increase. And just like with the head and the body so far, we're going to repeat that same process all the way around. Alright, so for rounds 4 through 15, all we need to do is put one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. And that's going to make our bunny's ears be nice and long. So for 12 rounds, we're going to just go around and around. I will see you back here when I get a little closer to the end of round 15. All right, so I am wrapping up the end of round 15 on my ear. So I'm going to go ahead and take my stitch marker out. And I'm going to slip stitch to that stitch the stitch marker was in. And then we're going to cut ourselves a long tail because we need it to sew the shape of the ear but also to attach the ear to our bunny's head. So I'm going to cut myself quite a long tail, probably 14 inches or so. And then just like with the body and the head, we're going to pull our last stitch out all the way. And then we'll tighten that slip knot so that it forms a knot. Then we're going to grab one of our tapestry needles and we'll thread the tail that we just cut through the eye of the needle. Alright, so now that we have our needle threaded, we're going to go ahead and take the ear and we're going to fold it flat so that both sides are pressed together. And then we want it so that our tail is over on the right side, so like as far over the right as it can be. So now that we have it folded flat, we're also going to pinch the two sides of the ear together, like this. 
And then we're going to take our tapestry needle and we're going to just blanket stitch through all four layers of the ear that are folded. And we're going to continue whip stitching through all four of those layers to secure the ear in this shape. And then once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and send our tail back up to the front of the ear. That gives our ear the nice shape that we want it to have for when we attach it onto our bunny's head. You can also unthread your tapestry needle at this point. You don't need to tie a knot or cut this because we're going to use the same tail to sew the ears onto the bunny's head. All right, so we have one ear done. We need one more before we can move on to our next section. All right, I have both of my bunny's ears complete, so I can move on and make the arms next. All right, so it's time to make our bunny's arms. We'll start off like we've done everything so far with a magic loop. Once we have all six, you can pull that magic loop tail we are ready to move on to our next round. For round two, we're going to increase in each stitch all the way around. And before we move on to our next round, we're going to give that magic green tail a tug to make sure it's nice and tight. And we're ready for rounds three through nine. All right, so for rounds three through nine, all we need to do is place one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. So there's my first stitch. I will see you whenever I get a little closer to the end of round nine. All right, so I am wrapping up round nine here on the arm. And I'm ready to start round 10, where we're gonna begin decreasing. So we'll place one single crochet stitch in the next two stitches and then a decrease, and we'll repeat that all the way around. Next, we're going to stuff the arm here, so we'll grab a little bit more of our fluff and go ahead and stuff. Then we can start round 11, where we'll put one single crochet stitch I follow that with a decrease, and we'll repeat that all the way around. I'm going to add a little more fluff here as well. And we're ready to fasten off. So we can go ahead and take our stitch marker out. And then we're going to slip stitch to the first stitch, the one that our stitch marker was just in. Then we'll cut ourselves a long tail for sewing, maybe 12 inches or so. And just like when we fastened off in the past, we're going to just pull that last stitch all the way out and then tighten that slip stitch. Then we're also going to thread our green tapestry needle with that tail. And just like with the legs on the body, we're going to sew through each of the remaining six stitches left. Once you've sewn through all six, we can pull. I'm also going to tie a surface knot, so I'll loop my thread over the top of my work, and then sew a little inside of the piece, and then up through that loop. And that completes one of the arms. We need to make one more and then we are ready to move on to assembly. All right, I have both of my arms crocheted. I am ready to start assembling this bunny. All right, so let's start with the bunny's head. We need to get the nose embroidered on. So inside of the little packet where your safety eyes were, there should be a little bit of red thread. I'm going to go ahead and thread that through the eye of one of our tapestry needles that came with our kit. 
And then we're also going to tie a knot here at the end of this red thread. And I like to tie mine by holding onto the thread. So I kind of pinch it against my sewing needle. And then I'll wrap it counterclockwise about 10 times total. And then I'm going to slip all of those wraps down and over the eye of my needle. You may have to twist your needle a little bit to get it over the eye. You keep sliding, sliding, sliding until those wraps slide to the end and turn into a knot. Then once we have the knot tied, we're going to go ahead and attach the nose. We're going to sew a couple of straight stitches here then one straight stitch down and a straight stitch at an angle for the bottom parts of the nose. So we're going to go up through the fluff and come up kind of close to the left eye. The fluff's kind of hard to sew through so try to snake your needle along the inside of like along the inside of the head. Alright, so now that I have my thread. I'm going to sew a few long straight stitches between the eyes. Alright, so now that I have all of my straight stitches, I'm going to make the mouth part next by sewing about two rows down below And then I'm going to come right up underneath where all those straight stitches are for the nose. So I'm going to send my needle down. And then I'm going to come up through the row just below where this is. So I'm going to send my needle down and into this spot. And I'll sew that long straight stitch that'll be like the bottom part of his nose. And then we're going to pass our needle underneath that thread that we just sewed. And then we'll send our needle back down through, kind of like one stitch away, but then in that same row that our first stitch is in, and down to the bottom of the head. And that forms our bunny's nose and mouth. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and tie a knot here inside of the fluff. So I just looped my thread over, and I'm going to pull it straight up through that loop I tied. And you can see that sort of locks it in place. We'll weave this in by sewing in through, up through a random spot. And we're going to go ahead and cut this. And that gives us our bunny's mouth. Alright, so let's move on to the next section. Next, we're going to attach the ears to the top of the bunny's head. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my first ear. And if you look, our pattern tells us that our ears need to go to the top of the head and they should be in line with the eyes and along rows four and five. So if we count one, two, three, four and five sit right here and then we can line the ears up with the eye. We're ready to sew the ear on and we're just going to go around the outside of the ear sewing into the bunny's head and up through the bottom of the ear and we'll just continue to whip stitch that ear on grabbing some of the fabric of the head and some of the fabric at the bottom of the ear with each stitch. So I'm going to continue working around. Alright, once you've sewn the ear on all the way around, we need to tie a surface knot. So make sure your yarn's coming up out of the bunny's ear before you, um, out of the, not out of the ear, but out of the head before you tie this knot. So I'm going to fold my yarn over the surface of my work, 
then sew up through that loop I made, and then weave that tail in by just going through a couple of spots randomly in the bunny's head to make sure it's nice and woven in. Then we can cut all excess close to the bunny's head. And that is one ear attached. We're going to repeat that same process on the other side with the other ear. All right, I have both of my bunny's ears attached, so now I am ready to attach the head to the body. All right, so to attach the bunny's head to the body, we're going to go ahead and thread our tapestry needle with the tail left over from the head, and we'll grab our body, and we're going to smush the head and the body together because we're actually going to be attaching on one of the rounds kind of close from the inside of the head. So if you count back one, two, three, four rounds or so, that's where we're going to be sewing the head and the body together. So it's about one, two, three rounds in from where the opening of the, body, the bunny's head is. And then one, two, three, four, the fifth round down on our bunny's body. So I'm going to take my tapestry needle and I'm just going to go ahead and send it straight through that round on the body and then I'm going to send it through that round on the head. Now that I have a stitch sewn, I'm ready to keep working around. So as you work, you need to be a little careful. You don't want the bunny's head to spin around so that his eyes aren't facing forward. So every so often when you sew a stitch, just double check that his eyes are still lined up with the front of his body. So I'm going to grab some more fabric from the body, grab some more fabric from the head, and I'm just going to continue whip stitching all the way around my body and head. All right, now that I have sewn all the way around, I'm ready to tie a knot. I'll do that just like I have been by looping my yarn over, sewing down and then up through that loop. To tie a knot, then I'm gonna weave my tail into the body. I'll just sew through a couple of random places. And then I'm going to snip that. And just like that, the body and the head are attached. So let's get the arms attached last. All right, let's get the arms attached onto our bunny's body. All right, so we're going to thread our tapestry needle with one of the tails left over from one of our arms. And then we're going to attach it to the side of the body and only one row below where we attached the head. So we're going to be sewing in between these two rounds here, one right below where the head is attached. And to attach the arms, we're just going to grab some of the fabric of the body and then come up through the top of the arm. And we're going to just run some stitches along the top of the arm through both layers of our fabric. And then I'm also going to put a few stitches along the side of my bunny's arm here. And depending on how tightly you want the arm attached, you can continue sewing around the underside, but I actually kind of like the arm to be a little poseable. So I'm going to stop sewing here. So I'm going to take the tail and I'm going to make sure it's coming out of my bunny's body, not out of the arm. And then I'm going to tie another surface knot by looping my yarn over and drawing up through that loop. Then I'll weave that tail in inside the bunny's body just like I've done on all of my parts so far. Once it's woven in, I'm going to go ahead and give it a snip. 
And that is one arm attached. So we need to repeat that same process on the other side. All right, both of my bunny's arms are attached and now it is my favorite part. It is time to accessorize. And just like that, our bunny is now fully accessorized and complete.